Today I'm going to review Consciousness and the Brain, Deciphering How the Brain Codes Our Thoughts by Stanislas Duhon. Stanislas Duhon is a, he's a French researcher and professor. I think he has, his background is in psychology and mathematics. He heads a research institution in France that studies uh, a lot of things about the brain, and one of them is consciousness. And in this book, he covers like 20 years of neuroscience research into exactly what is going on with consciousness and exactly how consciousness arises from unconscious processes. Um, it's a really good book. It was extremely fascinating. Most of the book is spent covering all the experiments that have been done and exactly how research was conducted and just going uh, experiment by experiment and, and just following the trail of discoveries that they had over this period of time and exactly how they uncovered exactly what was going on with consciousness. Uh, this was my favorite part of the book. It's most of the book, like I said, uh, but it's really interesting just thinking about all the experiments they did and how they did it and what it means. And then and after you read about the experiments, you can kind of reflect on them based on your, your own experiences because a lot of these uh, experiments were done with people who were there just like, they're doing a test and then they're reporting whether or not they saw something or what they saw. And they can kind of use subliminal messages to, to see exactly what the brain is picking up and what's being reported in consciousness. But a lot of these uh, experiments you can find videos of online. I'll, I'll throw some links below to, uh, for what I can find on YouTube. But a lot of these things, they're very accessible because you can almost test them on yourself. Uh, you, don't, you won't be able to record the results or the subconscious results because you need all this really nice uh, imaging equipment and these scientific instruments. But a lot of the tests, you know, you could, you could check out yourself. Uh, but... I mean, that part of the book is really fascinating. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot to cover there, and I, I couldn't explain all of it. Uh, it's definitely worth reading the book just for that part. Uh, but some of the most interesting conclusions from that research is that there's, uh, we usually think of, like, consciousness and unconsciousness, and that there's just kind of two categories there. But the book really goes into the difference between uh, types of unconscious uh, processes and thoughts. Uh, there's what the book calls pre-conscious thoughts, which is something that you could become consciously aware of, that the brain is kind of prepared for you if you want to focus your conscious attention on that object. And then there are unconscious thoughts and processes, which are never available uh, to your consciousness. So you can think of pre-conscious things. It's like when you're, uh, when you're looking at an image and you're focused on one part of the image, the unconscious processes are, are processing a lot of information about other aspects of that image. And you don't have to consciously focus on one, but a lot of that information is kind of there and it's prepared and ready for you in case you do focus on it. Um, and then there's things that you'll never pick up on, a lot of like the, the very low level information processing that goes into processing images and, and sound and kind of putting everything together in a coherent package for your consciousness. Um, the book is really interesting. I can't stress that enough. Going through these experiments and how it explains everything was really entertaining. It was a joy to listen to. There's a lot of information there. The author really comes across as extremely knowledgeable because a lot of these experiments were experiments done by the author or on a team of people that the author was part of. So, I mean, it's, it's a lot of it's firsthand and it's extremely well written. Another one of the takeaways from the book or one of the the points of the book is that consciousness is very functional. So the author, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about it in a minute, but the author spends most of his time just covering like this experimental research. But at the end of the book, he very briefly covers a lot of other topics on consciousness. You know, it talks about consciousness and machines and uh, dualism and, and his view on how consciousness arises and the hard problem of consciousness. And he, he doesn't shy away from it. It's not really covered very, very in much detail, but he definitely gives some strong conclusions for his thoughts in those areas. 
But one of the conclusions he talks about was that consciousness is not, you know, just a, an afterthought or something that just magically happened that was a nice thing to have but not necessary. He views consciousness as extremely functional. And a lot of that function has to do with very slow, deliberate thought processes. So things like solving a multi-step mathematical equation, that's a, the type of cognitive process that you can't do unconsciously. You really have to think on it and you have to have like a, a working conscious percept, as he would say in the book. And you have to manipulate that percept over time as it changes states and you, and you just do more thinking on it and uh, just a lot more conscious cognitive processes going into kind of that process. Uh, he explains it a lot better than I can now. It's really interesting. But yeah, he definitely thinks that consciousness is functional, uh, which is interesting going into like exactly how he, he came to that conclusion and all the research behind it. A lot of the, the interesting parts of this book are the research and how they did it. And it's very convincing in that manner because these experiments will really show you exactly how they logically got through all these different conclusions or they logically arrived at all these conclusions. So you can really follow their thinking along. So when you get to their, their end conclusions, it's, it's very uh, convincing because, you know, they've done a lot of experiments and research to get to that point. Which is, which is something really different for books about consciousness because a lot of them, like the last one I reviewed, I Am a Strange Loop, uh, they're very like philosophical and they're, they're very detached from reality. Or I mean like the, the, the physical reality of the world. They're, they're very philosophical. They're very abstract. This book is very different in that it's, it's very experimental. and It's much more like a traditional book on biology like Behave by Robert Sapolsky. That was something that was very refreshing for me on a book about consciousness because that's not something I see too much. I mean, there's not that much experimental data. So like I said before, at the end of the book, uh, the author talks about some of the more philosophical or abstract uh, issues about consciousness. So the author, he is a non-dualist, so he thinks that uh, there's just the material in the brain. There's no uh, other element that is kind of experiment, experiencing these like subjective uh, conscious states. He thinks that it's just the consciousness is just emergent from the, uh, the physical system and the way it's working, the abstract nature of it, what's going on. And based on this, the author says that he doesn't see any reason why we couldn't create conscious machines or machines that, that mimic our conscious processes. He also briefly covers uh, some of the, like moral issues, uh, things about like abortion and, and when is a child a human, when is it conscious. Uh, also animal rights, are mammals conscious, things like that. Uh, that's not a lot of the book. It's a pretty minor portion of the book, but I really appreciated that he was aware that people would be interested in those questions. And he did put it in the book and give like very conclusive, uh, clear statements on what he thought the answers were to those questions. So you don't really have to, to kind of do any legwork yourself to kind of put together what he thinks on those topics, which is nice. I, I was really appreciated that he did that because I was thinking about a lot of those issues. So when he, he gave a, a clear statement on each of them, it was very uh, satisfying for me. Uh, there are some things I wish he would have put in the book that he didn't. There's a lot of questions I had about sleep uh, from the book, Why We Sleep. Uh, I forgot who the author was. I will add that to the video and post. But uh, there's a lot of stuff about sleep that has to do with learning. So when you're learning, you're like consciously learning a skill or, or muscle movements. And then over time, those those movements will become uh, unconscious processes. So something's there, there's a bridge there between conscious things and, and unconscious things. Uh, something that would have been interesting to talk about, because I know sleep is a big part of that. Uh, and when you're dreaming, is that conscious? Is it semi-conscious? What are the differences uh, between like f normal consciousness and, and, you know, dreams where it almost feels like you're conscious? There's a, there's a, some other issues like that that I wish you would have talked about. I'm pretty sure he didn't talk about it because they don't have the research yet. A lot of the experiments required the subject to, to just tell the uh, researchers what they saw or what they were conscious of. 
So if they show a subliminal image and then another image right after, you know, the, the, the subject can just say, oh, I saw a donkey, you know, and so the person kind of has to be awake and conscious to, to fulfill that part of the experiment. So it'd be hard to do a lot of those experiments with a subject that was asleep, but maybe, you know, they have that research now and hopefully the author will come out with a second book that, that elaborates on some of these other questions that I thought about. Uh, this book came out in 2014, and there's been a lot more research since then, a lot more stuff, especially with the uh, AI and artificial intelligence and the progress on that front to recreate the human brain in a machine. Uh, so I, I hope the, the author has another book in the works that updates it, uh, the story and, and kind of goes further because this book really was very good. I would absolutely recommend this book. I'll show it to you again. It was a real pleasure to read. I'm, I was really surprised by it. I didn't expect to like it that much. And now I'm reading another book on consciousness. And immediately I'm, I'm starting to dislike the second book a little bit just because this book sets such a high uh, bar for covering that material that I think I'm going to, as I read more books on the subject, I'm going to do a lot of comparing against this book because this book was so good at articulately communicating a lot of research-based uh, opinions and facts about consciousness. So definitely, if you're interested in consciousness at all, pick it up. It's extremely interesting. You will definitely enjoy it. Um, and also, I hope you guys like this video. That's all I have to say on the book. I've got more book reviews coming soon. I've got a lot of books on my list to read. So stick around, like, subscribe, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.